So we now have our editing screen in Word and um, if you're a beginning writer often it will look like this. I always ask at writing school how many people here write in double spacing? I guess we can around 50% of them still stick up their hands and say well of course we do that's the way you're supposed to do it. Hello you know this is the 21st century it isn't. Um, the reason we used to write in double spacing like this is that everybody worked on paper and um, editors needed those double spacing so they could write in between the lines and do corrections and things like that. Basically the publishing industry doesn't work with paper anymore. Um, most manuscripts are read on a Kindle or something similar and however you format your original manuscript it's pretty irrelevant really. It will be reformatted electronically and edited electronically. And even if people do scribble things out on paper and send you back a, an annotated manuscript or a PDF, it doesn't really matter that you have to write in um, double spacing at all. And there are really, really strong reasons for not writing in double spacing. The very simple one being this. Um, you don't see so much. You know, the more you see of your words on the screen, the more you're going to pick up repetition, awkward sentences, clashes somehow, something that just sounds wrong. And that's harder if you've got double spacing. You know, look how many lines we're getting on the screen here. And let me just change the spacing on this so that you can see the difference. OK, this is as far as we go. OK, that's a page and a half in double spacing. If I go up here and change that to, say, 1.5, which is what I normally write in, it comes down to a single page. So the first thing you should do is work out what is a comfortable line spacing for you. As I say, for me it's 1.5. I would find going down to single line spacing just a bit too kind of crushed really. Um, but you could probably go down to say 1.15 and that's not bad. But I mean, it's really, it's down to you. It's personal taste, like the font you use. It doesn't really matter. Um, and just don't worry about what is going to happen to it when you finish your book. Just find a line spacing that's comfortable with your screen, with your eyesight, with your working habits, and then stick to it. This is a little app for the Mac and for the iPad called IA Writer. And it's a great little piece of software for writing something like a short story. I don't think you could manage a novel in it because there just aren't the tools for managing anything that has length or complexity. But if you just want to get words down, it is absolutely great. And the way it achieves this is through simplicity. There's not a lot you can do. What you see on the screen here is that text that I had in Microsoft Word in the only way you can view it. This is one font, it's called Nitty, it's monospaced, it's very simple. The developers tried to find one that worked really well on screen, and this certainly does. You cannot change the line spacing, you cannot change the paragraph format, you can't write bold, you can't write italics. All you can do is focus on the words. And that actually is a very good idea, because what you're trying to do, whether you write in Word, IA Writer, Scrivener, or anything else, is focus on the text. So choosing the right font that enables you to do that really is quite important. And it's really important too that once you've chosen it, you don't think about it. And that's the great thing about IA Writer is when you are writing, you really don't see the technology, you don't see the computer, you don't see the font, you don't see the formatting. All you see are your words. And the key is to try to recreate that on something else. So here we are back in Word on Windows and looking at the font we're going to use. And basically you've got three choices. There's a sans font, a serif font or a Roman font, or a monospace font. And let's begin with sans because sans fonts, these are fonts that don't have the fancy little bit called serifs on them. And they are generally believed to be more readable on an LCD screen than a serif font, which is basically aimed at print. Um, some people will disagree with that. It's, you know, it's a personal opinion and you should try different fonts and just try to work out for yourself um, which one works best for you. Um, but don't spend an awful lot of time on it. It's more important to write than it is to faff around with fonts. This is a standard sans font called Calibri. It's one of Microsoft's own. 
And actually, it's a pretty good clean font, I think. It was designed for being used on the screen, and I will often use that as a basic font on um, Windows. You can use it on Mac too, because it comes with a Mac Office. And it's quite nice, it's very clean. You can change the different sizes. This is 125%. Um, if we go up, you'll see it stays pretty clean as well. So you can have very, very readable text with this. So it is at 100%. Um, so that's uh, a very standard sans font. A lot of people, of course, will use Helvetica, which is probably the most common font in the world, I guess. Um, I find that slightly less than readable. Uh, and I say, oh, actually, I didn't even have it on the system. So there you go. Uh, it shows how much I use Helvetica. So let's try a serif font now and see how that works. And you may find as you mess with these fonts, you're going to want to change your line spacing and the, the zooming of the screen as well, because fonts, you know, they may all say they're 12 point, but 12 point can be bigger at one point and smaller than one point than others. So just, just experiment really and find out what works for you. So here we are in Calibri, and I'm just going to change to Cambria. Now Cambria is Again, one of Microsoft's own office fonts, um, pretty recent design for use on the screen. And actually, it is very readable. And in a way, if you write in a serif font, I think it says to you that you are writing something that's not a business letter, it's not a business plan, it's not a, a begging letter to the bank, it is fiction. So you know, it's worth just trying to work out what exactly you want from all this. And Sometimes there is an argument for writing in a very different kind of font when you're trying to write fiction than when you're trying to write something else. Uh, and there may even be an argument, if you're very, very picky about this, for writing in a different font for different projects. You know, maybe science fiction calls for a different font than, say, a romantic story. I don't know. It's completely up to you. So, to our last choice, which are monospace fonts, fonts that really do take you back to the days of the typewriter, because monospace means it's the same space between every letter, they're not crunched up to make them look like print, you will probably get fewer words to the page, but they can be very, very readable. And let's very quickly go through some of the choices you might want to look at here. Here we are back in the standard font I begin with, which is Calibri. And I'm just going to change to um, a font called Bitstream Vera Sans. Okay. Now that is a font that is very much like that nitty font that we saw earlier in IA Writer. It's actually a, a free font, although it's still copyright. You can just find it on the internet by searching for the name. Um, and if you like nitty, this is probably quite a good choice for you. I'd probably want to look at it a little bit bigger than that. Um, it gets you know, a lot clearer if you go to say 110, um, 120. That's quite a nice font if you just want to go for something very, very simple. And unlike Nitty, it does have italic and bold. So it's actually not restricting you on that front and it is free. Now, if you really want to go the whole hog with monospace fonts, why not just go right back in time and write on something that looks very like a typewriter. Now this is a font called P22 Typewriter. It's a commercial font, although I think you can get some cut down versions for free, but it's not a lot of money if you want to go there. And writing in P22 Typewriter looks like this. So you have that sort of distressed, strange, very, very old fashioned looking thing, which, you know, can work for some people. Again, you know, it's worth looking at and just seeing is this going to be for me but where i think this really does work is when you hit the reading mode with microsoft word which we'll discuss in another video but here take a look at this now that i think is pretty cool that makes me think this is a piece of fiction this really is a book manuscript um so there's a lot to be said for this kind of thing. I really like that. Having said that, there is no italic, there is no bold, so you're going to have to work with that somehow. But this, to me, looks like a book. 